Hi, I'm Chris from Air Windows, and hey, you can do this. This is Air Windows Disintegrate. So that sounds a little bit like another plugin that I put out that also starts with dis discontinuity. And that's because this, Air Windows Disintegrate, is like a variation on discontinuity, but letting you go way farther than discontinuity let you go. Because here's the thing. Discontinuity plays an important role in Console X. It plays an important role in getting like retro sounds based on back in the day when there were recording studios and you could turn amps up real loud and stuff like that. It's about getting accurate depictions of volume. But the algorithm can be used for other things, and this is what that's like. Discontinuity is meant to sound essentially normal. You're not supposed to hear it. It's supposed to give you subtle sonic cues based on sounding like something is at a volume at perhaps a distance. The whole thing was designed around measurements of like space shuttle and uh, starship takes off, takeoffs, things like that. Because when you have an incredibly loud sound, like a rocket takeoff, the farther it gets away, like miles in the air, you start hearing this wild discontinuity, this wild crackling noise, and the louder the basic sound is, the more easily you can hear it, even at great distances. If you're up close, you start getting some of that sound effect, even when it's incredibly loud, but many miles into the atmosphere, you're getting the effect even as it starts going quiet. This is more along the lines of getting that effect when things are still ridiculously loud. For instance, here's some drums. Still basically normal, right? And we can set all of this stuff up. I think I probably have it so that um, the middle setting resembles discontinuity. So you start getting a darkening effect as stuff gets really loud, but hey, we can go beyond that. We can get silly. And we're not only talking about the normal behavior of making the apparent volume get silly. We can do weirder things. Buff size is the size of the delay buffer that gets modulated with the shape and amplitude of the sound. So discontinuity, it's designed to do a certain thing. But turn it up. And you can get more ridiculous with it. It'll kick in sooner. It'll be a more obvious effect. It'll be doing more at lower volumes. And then we've got stuff like layers. Layers is the number of times we go through this because the way discontinuity works, you couldn't just do one layer of the processing. We can even hear how with the largest of buffer sizes, and the minimum number of layers, it's still not super obvious. In order to get it to really kick in, you add more layers, more iterations of the effect. And that sounds like this. So if we do that, we can back off this top DV control, which is limiting the overall volume of everything to some extent. Let it become louder again, but it'll still be a crazy effect.
So there you have it. That's different from what you get out of discontinuity. It's a more aggressive sound quality effect. It's making stuff real dark. It's a real strong striking effect. And we're no longer acting like this is meant to sound like reality. This is purely just get a sound effect that you're interested in getting. But then we've got this control, filter. What might that be? This is not simply a filter on the output of the effect. This is not simply rolling stuff off. This has to do with the way we are applying the effect. So, it does let you clean stuff up, but you'll notice that even with it all the way off, I'm pretty sure we hear a difference here. And tell you what, I can jump over to a different kind of sound that's probably going to be more revealing. Check it out. A guitar sound. So perhaps no filter kind of disables the effect. But watch this. Everything else is cranked up all the way, just about. But filter, not so much. So now we're getting real aggressive. Except for real aggressive, it's more like this. The full filter setting basically is more filtering than you need, but here you go. Here's the dry sound, and then we got a lot more saturation in an interesting way through so doing this. And I even have another guitar sound that was more recently done. A lot of this, I'm so busy making new plugins, I don't get to go into the studio and do more music in any way. I'm hoping that over the summer I will get everything together so that that can start happening. That'll be really exciting because you'll hear slightly different sounds when I give new plugins. Among the different sounds you're probably hearing is a dirt bike going by outside. No matter, I don't live in a fancy place put it that way. Here is another guitar sound. And this is a sound with a DI on the speaker. There's a Canadian company that makes speaker style DI's where you can you can put it in between your amp and speaker cabinet and grab a DI off of that. This one, I think it's JDX, it is a uh, phantom powered one, so I get to run it directly off the mic. But uh, then if we add this effect to it, we get to change the sound around a great deal because one of the things about discontinuity and disintegrate, since it responds to extremely low frequency sounds with a lot of energy, because their original design for discontinuity is to be able to make that air crackling sound out of stuff like space shuttle launches, out of stuff like distant rumble of thunder. And so as you add low frequencies to your sounds, it lets it kick in more aggressively. And that's what you're going to hear on the guitar sound here. We'll put these controls back. Immediately we get a particular kind of crunch and distance out of it. And that is a bunch of lame guitar soloing, so maybe I'll select a different section. This is just a reference audio. And now I will show you the different ways we can alter this sound as we go, with things like buffer size, layers, and filter. 
adding buffer size does this. Oh, and we're not looping, which is one reason it did that. Back to the freight. Buffer size. And it's kind of making it bigger and heavier as it goes. Or we can dial back the focus on the low frequencies. Kind of voice it like this. Layers also does a similar thing. We're kind of adding the fatness and chug out of the sound. Or cleaning and drying it up. And then filter, lastly. Pretty much is doing just darkening duties. And you can dial it back until nothing's happening. But again, this is not simply an output filter. You can hear that it is dialed back the extent to which it can do anything. So we can use these things in conjunction. And this has caused a sound where basically we're still dealing with the guitar sound. We can make it relatively clean. See, it's gotten a little bit louder too in the bargain. And then we kind of add size as we go. And of course, Keep going. To the degree of complete extreme ridiculousness. So, discontinuity will not do this. This is disintegrate. We are disintegrating. Or indeed, we've pretty much disintegrate Ed. In zones of disintegration beyond anything you've heard. Here's your sort of Trent Reznorification version of just twisting it out in weird ways that are not expected. Because I don't believe you have this on tap anywhere else. It's too weird of an algorithm. Here we have a kind of thunder sound. we have disintegrated it completely and it is gone. So there you are. I'm working on a bunch of different plugins which are keeping me real busy. I'm going to get back to work on them this afternoon after I finish editing this video. Among them, I have a new kind of compressor which will probably find its way into Console H. Console H is in the works and I promised that I would have that done by the end of the year, which I still think is reasonable. After all, I've got some of the bits that'll go into it now. Um, I'm still working on some of the other bits that'll go into it. I've got a D-Crackle plugin that has been multiple days of live streams in the works. 
I'm thinking about maybe putting together a playlist for anybody who likes to see me suffer so that uh, you can watch multiple six hour shifts of trying to get the thing to do what it's supposed to do and failing and failing and failing and then not failing. And the whole reason I'm doing that one, even though it's many days of struggling, is because I want to get back to posting the vinyl record tracks, basically the music that I grew up on, because that that basically informs what I'm trying to make happen with audio, because I do not hear coming out, well, maybe more so now in, in certain places, like you can listen to some King Gizzard and the Wizard Lizard and hear this kind of thing. But I tend not to hear stuff like what I grew up hearing in terms of tone quality. Musical choices can be a whole other story, but in terms of tone quality, like I grew up off of having a vinyl copy of Dark Side of the Moon, stuff like that. And there are characteristics that I don't get out of, you know, CDs, when CDs came out and then DAWs came out and everything started sounding relentlessly digital and CD and DAW-like. And I hated all of it because it didn't have the vibe I was looking for. And yet it turns out you can capture that vibe in digital media. You do not need to have the physical analog to do it. Digital media is capable of capturing these sounds. You just have to treat it a certain way. And disintegrate is one step in the direct, actually it's one step well past getting to that place. But that's because when I give you a tool, I also like to give you the crazy version of it that you can manipulate in weird ways and make strange, bizarre sounds out of. And uh, much in line with me um, using my little reference tracks for things, the whole point of that is you should use that in your sounds. This is not about imitating the noises I'm making. This is about hearing what the noises are and hopefully getting enough inspiration from that to be able to apply the stuff that I'm doing to something that you're doing. That's really the point. With that, I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Motorcycle going by again. Bye, catch you later too.